So I will conclude this session with uh, another lecture on heart failure quality metrics. Uh, I'm sure everyone enjoyed the lecture that Dr. Torres just gave uh, that she covered a lot of uh, quality related material. Uh, this is a picture of one of our patients that we can't seem to keep out of the hospital that has heart failure and the term that's used in the US is that the patient is a frequent flyer and we try to come up with a plan so that the patient will not be back in the hospital. There's obviously more to it than that as far as uh, a quality outcome is concerned. So today's era of healthcare, we're all challenged by this simple equation. Uh, and this is really from the work of Michael Porter at the Harvard Business School. And that is our challenge to create value. And the challenge that we have is to continuously improve quality and at the same time reduce cost, which improves value. So it's a tough challenge that we all have. And as you saw in the United States, we have a number of quality metrics that is growing by leaps and bounds uh, as each year passes. Some of these are by the Joint Commission, which is a uh, independent agency that provides accreditation to hospitals. Increasingly, a lot of the metrics come from uh, the government, from Medicare and the Center for Medicare Services, and there are a variety of other independent uh, agencies and a growing number of publicly reported metrics that are on uh, websites. So patients have access to all of this information, uh, as do payers. So the core measures are the, the, the simple things related to the patient in the hospital. Did we measure the ejection fraction? You just saw this slide. Uh, counsel the patient on smoking cessation, provide uh, education, ACE inhibitors, uh, et cetera. Patient satisfaction is a growing challenge that we all have. And you can go on the internet and if you're uh, curious and find how Dr. Sinfendorf or Dr. Mick and I have been rated by our patients when uh, we see them in the clinic and we see them in the hospital. This information is posted on the Cleveland Clinic website. So all the patients are uh, sent surveys and uh, this is public information. Safety also is, is a very big challenge for us. So I, as the director of a heart failure program, now have a metric that looks not only what happens in the hospital, but it also looks at what happens in the next 30 days after that patient is uh, released from the hospital. And it can include things uh, such as whether the patient develops a pressure ulcer, a bed sore while they're in the hospital, which is clearly not something that a heart failure specialist was trained uh, about, but it's now very much a part of what we're held accountable for. This is very important uh, to our CEO and our leadership in that the publicly reported data, some of which I will show you, if a hospital does not meet the expectations, it now is resulting in millions of dollars of revenue that is pen penalized to the hospital. So this I uh, mentioned, and the, the last one is, is a new one, which is a follow-up visit within seven days is now being looked at increasingly by many different bodies as an important quality metric. 
So if you flip the, the coin and you look at this from the patient's perspective and the things that the patient is being queried about on their questionnaires, it includes things like, is the room quiet at night? Are the lights dimmed? How does the food taste? Uh, did you have problems with the billing? Uh, did somebody come to your room quickly uh, when you called for help? Uh, did your doctor talk to you? Did your doctor answer questions? Was the nurse available? So these are uh, increasingly, and, and all of us as physicians have received mandatory training to make us better communicators and to enhance the patient experience. So to get back to some of the very dry but objective data. So this is uh, CMS data published in JAMA by Harlan Krumholtz. So just to give you a snapshot, if you look at length of stay for heart failure patients, the length of stay has tended to go down in the United States. If you look at the 30-day all-cause readmission rate, that has tended to increase over the same time period. This is the, perhaps the most interesting data. If you look at the top, which is in green, which is the 30-day mortality rate, it's trending down. If you, and you just saw this in Columbia, in-hospital mortality is trending down. But what's disturbing is that the post-discharge mortality is increasing. And I showed you in an earlier lecture that vulnerable period after a patient is discharged from the hospital, they die of heart failure events. They don't die of sudden cardiac death. So the message, I think, is that we, we do a better job in the hospital, but we need to do a better job after the patient leaves the hospital. So this is an example of publicly reported information from the Cleveland Clinic. This is a few years old. We've improved. Uh, but what you can see in red is that we were posted on the government website as doing worse than expected as far as our rate of readmission for heart failure patients. This, of course, was very disturbing to us and to our uh, hospital leadership. So we've been working on that. So that's the information the, from a granular standpoint that I've just shown you in these composite Medicare slides. So the summary that uh, Krumholtz and colleagues concluded from that data was the length of stay is going down there's a reduction in in-hospital and 30-day uh, uh, mortality, but there's an increase in post-discharge mortality. There's been changes in discharge disposition, and the readmission rate at 30 days is increasing. So this paper, which was published five years ago, was really alarming that there was a lot of work that needed to be done. So the federal government responded to this and uh, they responded to it in that one in five Medicare beneficiaries being discharged were readmitted within 30 days at an estimated cost of $17.4 billion. So they decided to start to find the hospitals if they couldn't do a better job. Now, I just want to make one mention. So if in the United States, if you look at the inpatient mortality rate for heart failure, it's, it's right around 4%. The 30-day mortality rate is, is around 10%. And there's many ways you can risk stratify that. So for example, the patient with renal insufficiency and low blood pressure and high creatinine, they may have projected a close to 20% mortality versus a very low risk patient down around 2%. So those are aggregate uh, numbers. There's wide variation around the world. So this is a paper from Circulation Heart Failure 
uh, from the Ascend HF trial that I mentioned earlier, which was nazaratide or standard of care for acute decompensated heart failure. So you can see the United States is the big uh, circle at the right where we had 18% of the patients were readmitted. We had a length of stay that was about six days. Uh, you, you don't see it on here, but if in uh, Western Europe, for example, their length of stay was more like 10 to 15 days and their readmission rates were 4%, very low. So this, you, which you can't see, but what this shows is all the different countries and the variability. And w when I'm in Colombia, I'll show you the data from Colombia. So this doesn't, I don't think, mean a whole lot because there were only 30 patients. But this is what's published in this particular article, that in Colombia you had an eight-day length of stay and a readmission rate of 16.7% during the Ascend HF study. So we asked the question, are readmissions a sign of poor quality care? Very contentious topic. So this was published in the New England Journal uh, in 2010. So what I want to call your attention to here is the, um, the x-axis is a risk-adjusted 30-day uh, readmission rate and the uh, y-axis is a risk-adjusted 30-day uh, mortality rate. And this represents Medicare patients uh, from 3,857 hospitals. So which, what you see here is that patient or hospitals with uh, high readmission rates tended to have lower mortality rates. You know, and obviously, a, a dead patient can't be readmitted, right? So we, we concluded in this article, it really was a letter, it was a brief report, readmissions could be adversely affected by a competing risk of death. One simple measure isn't enough. There have been two subsequent publications that have looked at this, one by Krumholtz and one by Paul Heinrich uh, at Stanford that have shown the same thing. So. Um, our job is to improve outcomes, not necessarily a challenge or uh, defend a metric. So why are patients readmitted to the question? So we also asked that question. We came up with uh, quite a big list. It's similar to what others have reported. But one of the things that we focused on was uh, what happens to our patients when they leave the hospital? And we developed a bias in Cleveland that some of the skilled nursing facilities uh, were particularly problematic. So Larry Allen from the University of Colorado published this paper. And if you, what it shows is that the mortality rate, if you're discharged to a skilled nursing facility in the United States, is statistically significantly higher than if you're discharged to home. Definitely you know, there's room for risk adjusting as far as the severity of illness in these patients. But this was alarming and it really put a message out. And now the Cleveland Clinic Health System basically goes out and, and inspects all of these different facilities. We've come up of, with a list of the ones that we think are preferred versus the ones to stay away from. We've even gotten nurse practitioners that have been privileged that can go into some of these facilities and see patients. So these are the type of things that have challenged us to try to improve some of these metrics. Nobody really knows how to prevent readmissions, but there's, it's an extremely active area of research. So this is a uh, another paper that was published that looked at the Get With the Guidelines registry. And the message in this paper, if you look at this line that's falling down, so the x-axis is a number of selected strategies that were implemented by a hospital to try to reduce readmissions. And the y-axis is risk uh, standardized readmission rate. So the punchline here was that the more strategies that a, that a healthcare institution came up with, patient education, visits at home, 
providing rides to get patients back to the clinics, education. It helped to reduce the readmissions. So this is a quote from, from uh, Chris O'Connor. Uh, One thing is certain, uh, rehospitalization after heart failure admission is complex, multifactorial, and not clearly related to quality. So what we have uh, focused on uh, at the Cleveland Clinic is we've defined some of these admissions are unavoidable, some of them are planned, but our opportunity for improving the quality of our patients is in these unplanned, avoidable uh, admissions. We, we haven't come up with the uh, best approach yet, but we're really focusing on transition of care, home visits, seven-day visits, 30-day follow-up visits. You've heard a lot about the use of medications. This is a nice review in Jack. Again, this is in the United States, but this is also pointing out, you've seen a lot of the data, lack of use of evidence-based therapies in the U.S. is a very prevalent, and there's lots of studies that show if we just do a better job of giving the medications that have been proven to be efficacious, there will be incremental cost effectiveness just by deploying the guideline-directed medical therapies and not only giving the medications, but titrating them to uh, target doses. That leads to a comment as to, so some feel and that the most effective strategy is to have a heart failure specialist that works with non-physicians, uh, nurse practitioners, physician's assistants, sets up a network of heart failure clinics. Another camp is that these patients can be cared for effectively by general practitioners, by family doctors. Uh, that's a debate right now that's going on in the United States as to how is the best way to deliver care. So in summary, the, re the readmission metric is complex and I believe a reflection uh, overall of the composite of quality of care over the continuum. Accurate risk assessment tools to predict readmission are needed. Predicting the risk of readmission and reducing readmissions, I think, are two separate challenges. We're right now involved in a project with the Harvard Business School where we're going to collect very granular data on claims as well as patient lever level variables so we can hopefully risk stratify patients both related to uh, medical outcomes but also cost to the health system and then deploy strategies to target the patients that are the most burdensome if you will from a cost standpoint but also at the most risk for medical outcomes and the other thing that is being done all over the United States and definitely at the Cleveland Clinic is the use of care paths. So we are trying to reduce as much variability as possible in how care is delivered by developing care paths and heart failure to be deployed throughout the health system. So in conclusion, there is an important public health need for effective therapies to reduce rehospitalization following heart failure admissions and to prevent readmissions, greater use of existing evidence-based therapies will improve outcomes. Thank you.